We're here at the Google Analytics Users Great Event, New York City, and I'm Daniel Weisberg, and I'm here with Bianca Jane. She's uh, the CEO of A-Ring, so welcome. Thank you. Would you please share with us a little bit about the company and about yourself? Sure, okay. sure. So A-Ring is a premier analytics training company. Uh, we do uh, one to three day boot camps on analytics and how do you drive, how do business professionals drive decisions based on data? So whether it is, whether you have tools like Google Analytics, Omniture, Teradata, Oracle, Big Data, whatever, however way you have, you're accessing data, whether you're, and you're a marketing professional, business professional, you're an analyst, you're a BI professional. How do we empower you to make better decisions based on data? That's what we are, our passion is. Uh, and that's what we are doing. We do it through corporate workshops. We do on-site training. We were at um, Google for four weeks ago, uh, doing training for partner solutions team there. Uh, we also do public workshops, which is how we are here at uh, Predictive Analytics World, uh, doing you know two di two different workshops. So we do do it through the combination of public workshops and uh, corporate workshops. Um, a little bit about me. I have about ten years of experience in analytics. Um, was heading up analytics organization mostly at um, PayPal, Adobe, um, and I have driven about close to 100 million plus impact in business through analytics. Sounds, so, sounds a big. lot. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot. Yeah, when the denominator is big, the numerator yeah. can get big, you know. <laughs> That's what happens when you work with big companies. But yeah, there are other challenges which happens when you work with big companies. So. Yeah, so how do you go about uh, creating a data-driven culture and organizations? Right, so uh, it's a great question. I think it's a big part of that is a function of leadership and the visions they have. Um, I was just talking to a gentleman recently. Um, he's, he's heading up the uh, analytics organization for the banking business in a banking organization. Um, and the, that organization, for example, uh, the leadership uses analytics as a way to support their decisions. Uh, to me, that's not necessarily data driven. For me, it would be a combination of you have hypothesis from business, but then you have data coming in, and then the mo both merging and coming coming to a better decision. But if you use only data to prove and disprove what you are already going to do, a decision you've made, uh, you know that's that's the culture. Um, that culture is is. They are driven on any other culture. How a way the culture is driven is driven by leadership. So. So if you are setting up an organization or if you're, uh, if you are, uh, are heading up a big organization and want to uh, percolate that kind of culture in your organization higher right, you want those visionaries and thought leaders of folks who are looking to drive decisions based on data. And they're not, they are fearless. I mean, take Xinga for example. They have a relentless culture of test and learn. They are testing every day. Every second day they are rolling out product and they're, they're ready to do incremental optimization on the new features they are launching, right? So I think it's driven, first it's driven by the leadership. Um, you know, who, who do you have on top and how, how are they wired? How are they looking to run their business? The, the second aspect is um, the, you know, the higher right, which I talked about, but also hiring the right skill set. So you, 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 uh, you can be driving, uh, I, I've seen a lot of places where you have a lot of MBAs and a lot of these cross-functional, very smart business folks, but then you hire a lot of statisticians and then they both don't talk to each other, uh, which is where the friction. So hiring right, thinking about where you want to go and what kind of skill set you need and the combination of skill sets you need. You may need some you know, data scientist predictive analytics, my data mining folks uh, who are going deeper, you may need breadth folks, right? So so hiring right and, and finding the right skills of people, um, that, would be the, that would be the other thing. And, um, you know, the third thing for me is, is having that, that um, accountability, me measure everything. You know, like, do you ski? Do you what? ski? Do you ski, uh, like, no. skiing? Okay. Mm. So if you ski, for example, if you're skiing downhill, um, this is how I learned skiing. The instructor would tell you, you know, look where you want to go. Because, you know, if you try to move your body around and try to go a different direction, you don't. But as soon as you look that way, you, you know, you automatically ski that way. So look where you go. Essentially, if you measure yourself and you measure with the right metrics, that is where you will go. 
if you're not for example that gauge con talk i was giving about if you're not looking for optimizing your marketing spend you're not going to look in that direction where the opportunity may lie mm -hmm. so a culture uh, analytics driven or data driven culture comes from those that uh, those organizations which are who are ready to measure and measure everything and uh, as a result of measuring they start looking in that direction so these are the three things that i think it's very interesting them. and and do you see any difference when when we talk about multiple like companies that uh, span multiple continents, I don't know, cultures, countries, or right. how, what, what do you see different? Yeah, in my experience, for example, with PayPal, we've had, um, um, I, ha I would have a, uh, you know, a team here. We also had team in India. We would have team internationally in Europe and so on. I mean, there's one is when you're an like analytics organization, in a large organization, you know, analytics organization is distributed. A lot of context is still sitting in the context, uh, sorry, in the headquarter. And the analytics is only as powerful as the context, right? You, you can't necessarily create awesome decisions based in silos. Like here, you and I are sitting in this room and we are making decisions on a third company. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It, you, you, analytics is only as powerful as the context in which it, it sits, right? So um, that's, I think that, that is one challenge when you have cross-country, cross uh, cross-continent groups and they're sitting everywhere. Um, and the decisions are being made in the headquarters. Let's say it's based out in the US, or let's say it's based in the UK. How, how, do you, how, do you trans, how, how do you get the, the context percolated in the organization? I, I, you know, that is one of the challenges I had when I had hiring international teams. But in general, I think different, different um, cultures have different at aptitude for analytics. Um, and I think that will be a function of that. I mean, we are, we are for example, in, in US, we are, we are driven by capitalism. We are driven by dollars. So it's, it's very easy for us to use analytics to drive dollar impact. There are other cul cultures which are driven by more people, right? And so it's harder to drive in, in that sense unless you can draw that connection and connect the dot between people and analytics and dollars. It's harder to drive that culture. But that's my general observation. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, that much about yeah. it. <laughs> so you spoke about in, in your keynote at Gage, you spoke about how to make 120K in two hours mm -hmm. for a company. Mm -hmm. So how can we do that? <laughs> um, you know, the, by, by following uh, the recipe, the recipe of a you know, five step framework of how do you get to from data to decision. And it's not complicated. The first one is like in anything else, what is your real business question? What are you going, what, why are you here, even here talking about this? What is the real business question that you're hoping to address? And from there, hopefully, you'll understand what are your goals, um, you know, and what do you need to look towards? What are your hypotheses and so on and so forth? So, so understanding what are your real business questions. Secondly, laying out your goals and plans. How are you going to get to that question? How are you going to address that question? Thirdly, you do, uh, you know, you access data. You get get data based on those hypotheses and goals. Uh, and then fourth step is doing the analysis. The analysis is also there's a, there's a lot of failure which happens. Use the right technique for the right side of question. There's a, there's a direct direct relationship there. So use the right technique for the right question, um, and then follow through that. Don't take shortcuts. Look at when when people say look at data and uh, do triangulation and do auditing. There's a lot of wisdom there because you may come to a wrong insight, an incorrect insight, and it's it's actually not meaningful because some some step was missed. So follow through the steps, and then step four is base, step five is basically you know, tie it, tie your insights to the impact. How um, you know, and we have a recipe for that. We do have a white paper on airing.com if if folks are interested. Um, it's a r y n g dot com airing.com you can find a white paper which will talk about we'll all the, the five steps directly to the white paper okay you. great so that you know that's kind of you can find a more, little bit more about it but you know essentially how you make 120k incremental for a million dollar business is no different in some sense than how do you make 120 million incremental for a billion dollar business there is difference in execution there is difference in you know cross functional um, you know, cross-functional alignment, how do you bring people together, how do you influence senior management, but there isn't a whole lot of difference in the approach. It's the same five step from data to decision. 
that can that can help you towards that. Great. And how do you see the future of analytics? I mean, so much is changing and acquisitions and new tools and what's right. the future? Right. <laughs> I don't know if you read the McKinsey report, which talked about you know how there's a, going to be a huge <laughs> gap in analytics talent. You know about by. 2018, I believe they were saying 1.5 million um, gap of 1.5 million analysts and managers who can understand uh, data and make decisions based on that. So I think there's going to be a huge dearth of people uh, who can who can make sense of data. But I don't think the solution would be that somehow 1.5 million analysts will pop <laughs> on this earth. I don't think that that's the solution. I think where analytics is going is that it's going to be part of each uh, most of the professionals whether they are sales product or marketing or whether they are be a professional analytics is will have to be part of individuals life in work life as well as you know our personal life in personal life I mean look at how we use our smartphones we you know you go to Yelp and say highest rating when you're going to go out for uh, eat to eat out right and you're here in new town in, in New York and if you don't know of friends who can take you out and tell you which are the big best restaurant you go to you know, a higher, you go for a ranking and you yeah. go to that. We are using analytics here, right, as individuals. So it's not like in within as an individuals, we don't say, oh, you somebody who's an analyst, can you tell me which restaurant I go? Analytics has now become part of our life as individuals. I think that's where business is going to, where sales, marketing, product, analytics would be part of their, their you know, X percent of their, you know, their profile, that not only do they manage creative, for a marketing campaign and um, then test and plan for that, but they also do the you know measure themselves, set themselves up for measuring, and then analyze what comes out and know whether they are successful or not. So that's I think there's a hybrid model where people will be analysts. Some part of their role would be analyst. That's, what that's I'm great. Saying. We'll be there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. <laughs>